Right, we're broadcasting. I'm just going to wait a little bit for some participants to trickle in. We've got the whole of the Young Audiences Content Fund here with us today. It's a real treat to have the whole team. There they are. Look at all those faces. Just waiting for this um, participant figure to level off and then, then we can get going. Right, oh no, still people coming in. Buying their popcorn outside, coming in late. Um, all right, let's kick off. Welcome everyone, this is another BFI Network Live webinar. And today we have our good friends and colleagues with us, the Young Audiences Content Fund. And uh, we're going to be talking to the team this morning about their production and development funds principally, and the brilliant work that they've been doing to reinvigorate content for young audiences across the UK. Uh, we're also going to be talking about what makes a good funding application and demystifying how that process works within the team. For the last 20 minutes or so, um, we can open up the conversation a bit and take any questions that people have. So you'll see, I'm sure you're all super familiar with Zoom webinars now, but you can uh, drop questions into the Q&A box um, and we can pick them up later on. There's also a chat function there. My colleague Cara, lurking in the background, is going to be in there if anybody wants to have a chat with her. Uh, she'll be dropping links in and things like that as they come up throughout the conversation. Um, anything else? Oh, yes, if you're in the chat, um, it defaults uh, the setting to all panellists, which means only the panellists, only the speakers can read what you're saying. If you want to sort of engage more widely with everyone, set the settings in there to all panellists and attendees, and then everyone can see. Um, all right. So I'm gonna kick off the session now with a few introductions. I'm gonna call out the team members in no particular order, just wherever they are on, on my Zoom frame, and just uh, get them to say hi, explain who they are and what they do within the fund. So Harriet, you're closest to me. What do you do? Who are you? I'm Harriet. I am the development executive for the fund. So I review all the applications to the development fund specifically. Um, and then I review all the projects as they go through their development work, if they're, if they're successful. Well, John? Hi, I'm John Knowles. I'm a, a production executive for the fund. So um, equivalent of, of Harriet really but in production so I, I review all the uh, production applications and uh, and any that we award I then kind of you know look after them through the production as well so that's it. Real. Uh, Aisha? Hi I'm Aisha I'm the administrator of the fund so I look at the applications against the eligibility criteria um, and let those in um, and then I also help with the um, deliverables later on in the process. Brill. Hisham? Hi, I'm uh, Hisham. I'm uh, the lawyer for the fund and I look after legal and business affairs uh, in respect of all of the applications from reviewing the uh, applications that come in and checking all in order. Once they're approved, uh, I deal with the contract contracting and the uh, documenting of the award. Thank you. Chandan? And I'm the coordinator of the fund. Um, I help to organise meetings, stakeholder meetings. I do a lot of finance, setting up the payments. Um, also help with deliverables later in the process. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Jill? Hello, I'm Jill. I'm the project manager for the fund. Um, so I look after making sure that it runs smoothly, hopefully. Um, but also I scrutinise and interrogate budgets and schedules and anything to do with finance relating to the awards that we intend to make and the awards we have made. Thanks. And Gwyn? Hi, um, I'm Gwyn. I'm the awards assistant and um, I basically support the rest of the team. And last but not least, Jackie. 
Hello, and thank you for having us in your homes. Um, it's lovely to be here. I'm Jackie, I'm the head of the fund and uh, responsible for the successful implementation and strategic, strategic direction, if I could say it, of the fund. Super. So while, while I've got you there, Jackie, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions just to kick things off. Um, so just thinking about the fund overall, could you tell us a bit about the background to the fund and why it was set up, its key aims, how it's been going? Yes, you're sitting comfortably. Well, over the last sort of decade or so, there's been a huge decline in the provision of brilliant public service content for children and young people in the UK. A series of unfortunate events over the years have caused this, but um, in 2018, the government launched a review um, as to what should be done with uh, an underspend from a digital broadband project of £60 million. And in 2020, the end of that year, they decided that it was going to go towards setting up a fund that would be um, the, with the intention of revivifying the production and broadcast landscape for uh, public service broadcast for children and young people in the UK. Um, so in April, on April the 1st, 2019, a little over a year ago, uh, we opened the doors of the uh, BFI Young Audiences Content Fund with um, 57 mil million reasons to love the fund, everybody. Um, it is a fund of 57 million pounds to be spent over three year pilot periods. And it is intended to support the development and production of brilliant new public service content for young audiences. Um, so we're, we're just, well, nearly 18 months old, I suppose. Um, and our first year, we made great progress, I think, from standing start to have got um, over 227 applications through the door. Um, and we made um, 59 development awards and 17 production awards and spent 12 and a half million pounds, which from a standing start of 12 months was pretty good going. And so we're continuing um, and all credit to the team who just pulled together from day one and um, started funding immediately. And I think we made our first award within six weeks of opening the fund doors. So it's been pretty remarkable and we are having a lot of um, you know, great successes through the fund. Broadcasters are already noting the improved quality of pitches that are coming to them because they've had the structure that proper development funding gives them. And, you know, there are beautiful new shows going to be put in front of audiences and have already more so towards the end of this year. But the why it was set up and, you know, why is public service content important, I suppose, that's the big, um, the big question. Um, and it's the thing of, you know, public service broadcast, I think this year, this weird old year we're living through has amply demonstrated the need for television that reflects our lives and speaks uniquely to us in this country. Um, it tells us about ourselves. It tells our uniquely British stories and forms a bit of a cultural glue, I suppose, for the country. And we can all sort of gather around it. It shows us how show, shows us how we are, really, I suppose, and sort of how to how to be. And so it's a really important facet that there is provision of this content that's uniquely made for young people of this country and is free to access. Because you know we all love the SVOD services and the streamers, but they are subscription behind a subscription paywall. So content that's brilliant and free to access and speaks uniquely to this country's own people is so important. And that's what the key aim, of, I suppose, of the fund is, to really make programme that resonates specifically with UK audiences. So it's a beautiful thing we're doing. So if you haven't already applied, mm -hmm. I'm going to encourage you to. Yes, do. They've got lots of money as well. So yes, <laughs> and it's free money. It's free money, Jess. I think it's worth saying those two words. Yeah, free money. Who doesn't like that? No, you guys have been doing brilliant work and there was a Guardian article quite recently, wasn't there, that you're probably all too um, modest to mention that really called out all the brilliant work that you've been doing and the impact that the fund has had already just so quickly within. It, it's only really been 18 months, hasn't it? It's not, it's yeah. not been that long to get a whole new team together and promote the fund and 
take all those meetings with producers and content creators and get the money out the door as well. Yeah, it's been a real community endeavour and I suppose that's the way we pitched it from the get-go is, you know, we need everybody to kind of be involved in this. Anybody that cares about great public service content for young people, they need to be involved. Whether you're a producer bringing out your best IP um, and, you know, getting that out to the world and the public service broadcasters getting them engaged and really sort of um, getting behind the project. And also the trade bodies, anybody, talent, everybody getting involved and it really has been that community spirit I think that's been a big part of the success of the fund and I think you know as I say the way the team pulled together to kind of make things happen quickly so it's been brilliant and a massive joy as it says in the Guardian article yes so it's a three-year pilot period that's right isn't it that's so right. by, by the end of that are the long-term changes that you would like like the fund to sort of have initiated across the sector yes i mean already as i say we are seeing the difference that proper resource and structure makes to development funding um, and i think that is a big plus in terms of upskilling the production community you know having that sort of ability to pro have a properly structured development process makes all the difference in the world, I think, and we can expedite things getting to commissioners. The quality of programming that we're supporting is brilliant. And, you know, broadcasters are really delighted with the way things are going. And, you know, the advertiser funded public service broadcasters, as we all know, the loss of advertising revenue is particularly difficult. So we are particularly helpful to be it's particularly helpful that we're here at this time for them um, but I think you know the real difference is going to be for audiences I think I hope that the content that we are supporting is going to make a real difference to their lives and basically um, bring them those audiences back to free to access platforms because there's just been so little great content that's made specifically for them when it gets there I hope that they come to there and prove the point to broadcasters and government that, you know, there is a fantastic talent base in this country that can make brilliant, amazing programmes. And we shouldn't um, let go of that fact and we should support and nurture it because there's an economic importance to um, this work as well in the longer term. So I think I think it's, going to, it's making a difference already. I think it's got the power to make a big impact over the three years. And 57 million sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but in the scheme of things, it's actually not that much. And I think we're proving the point that we're doing a lot with actually relatively little. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. So I'm going to move on now to um, talk to Harriet and John a bit about the funds that are available and what people can apply for, how they can get involved in your work and, um, and the team. Um, so starting with development, Harriet, could you tell us a bit about the development fund, what sort of projects you can support, how it works, how people can engage, costs that you can cover, that kind of thing? Yeah, so the development fund, we can cover up to 100% of development costs of what we call reasonable activity. So um, that can cover sort of anything that would I guess benefit the project and help it get towards that commission. So for development funding, we don't require any interest or commitment from a broadcaster, but ideally you would have some idea of which of those qualifying public service broadcasters you, you know, you'd be aiming for. Um, all applications we get through um, a form online. Um, some people, you know, it, it might seem like a lot at first, but actually it can be quite a beneficial process for your project and we have had feedback that you know sometimes they've been copying out answers to questions and putting it back in their bible because it does make them think about their projects in a way that they hadn't perhaps considered before um and yet we we use that to assess against all our criteria um you know with development you know reasonable activity typically for something scripted it would include script a bible it really depends on i guess the genre and we do cover any genre for any age audience up to and including 18 years of age so perhaps for an animated project we might do um, some animation tests if it was sort of later on in the day or um you know we've, we've been able to fund a lot of research that's been really beneficial especially for you know perhaps content that's not been done 
for young audiences before we can look at say impact assessments. Um, we've also had some exciting projects where they've invited you know really new young writers into the writers room and then that's really had you know a good impact on sort of I guess the authenticity of the project. Um, but we, we can really consider sort of anything I'd say within reason. That's exciting. Thanks. Um, and John, could you give us an overview of the production fund, how that works and what, what people can apply for there, how they sort of how they can make themselves eligible for it? Sorry, I was trying to use a um, spacebar shortcut and it didn't work. Oh, anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, so, similarly to the to the development fund, really. Um, but but the, the main difference is obviously with, with, with production is that we would need uh, a letter of commitment from uh, one of the qualifying broadcasters, um, which uh, is, is obviously um, free to access uh, Ofcom regulated um, with a, a wide enough um, audience uh, base. And, and, and then that, that, that last one um, is a slight caveat on that is if, if it, is an indigenous language uh, uh, show, then then it doesn't necessarily have to have, you know, uh, that, that that wide audience scope, as it as it were, from, from the qualifying broadcaster. Um, we can we can uh, put in uh, up to fifty percent uh, of the funds um, of the budget, um, and uh, and so obviously we need sight of of the, that other uh, at least minimum fifty percent uh, already in place from from various different places you know that it could come from you know license fee or pre-sales or distribution or whatever you know we, we need to have, have sight that those those funds are already in in place for us to be able to um, to to make an award uh, and and i did i guess we do emphasize the um you know up to 50 percent um and just because of what jackie was saying really you know it, it is a lot of money um but when you break it down over, over the, the, the year and break it down into development and production and also, you know, all the different genres, all the different age groups, all the different techniques, you know, we, we are trying to do as much as we can and make this fun go as far as we can. So, so the, you know, we, we, do, we do hope that we can, can put in, um, um, you know, less than the 50% if, if, if possible, but, you know, it, it's not, not necessary. So, um, so, so they're the main differences really from, from development. Um, uh, but, but, you know, we're asking for kind of similar things. And with it being, you know, production, obviously we, we, we want to see, you know, uh, all, all the things that you, you, you may have um, uh, created out of development to, to kind of make it the strongest uh, possible um, uh, project it can be. Well, I see that, um... Cara's been dropping the uh, the fund guidelines into the chat there, so everybody should have a read of those uh, and just familiarise themselves with um, how everything works. Um, so thinking about, you know, if people are wanting to put an application into either development or production, um, what do you both look for? Maybe I'll start with Harriet first, go back to Harriet. What, what do you look for in an application? Are there any materials that are particularly useful for you to see that people might have created? I think with development you can come to us really at any stage so it can really be sort of you know the very beginnings of an idea and we can get on board sort of as early as you are able to prove it aligns with our criteria and you can do that simply through the form so there have been somewhere there's you know very little material that you know has actually been done but it's you know there's that form to help you show how it aligns with our criteria so you know whether you want to option a book for example um, and then do just an initial treatment we can get on board really early so I guess what we're looking for as long as you meet the criteria which is laid out in the guidelines um, which you know covers you know your obvious quality um, innovation additionality I'll read them all out shall I nations <laughs> and regions diversity <laughs> new voices and then you know one of those qualifying broadcasts um, so th that's mainly what we're looking for. But John, do you, you have a few more requirements? I think. Um, yeah. So, uh, again, you know, obviously the same kind of criteria. It's um, it, it, with it being production, we just need those. You know, a, a letter of commitment. You know, sight of the funds. Um, 
and, and you know uh, various other kind of legal documentation that I'll, I'll leave Hesham to kind of go into later. Um, but 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 also you know we obviously need a kind of nailed on budget you know and schedule as well for us to kind of you know really kind of scrutinise it and, and Jill will go on to that uh, later as well. Um, but but we just need as much information as possible. You know if you, if you've got you know all the kind of stuff that you've done through your development uh, bibles pitch decks teasers scripts you name it you know just just everything that you can that will um inform us as to what the the actual project is and and, and what its intentions are and and approach and, and everything really I, I suppose you know if, if you've got materials that you don't necessarily feel irrelevant anymore because it may have changed or progressed in a different way or you know it, it, it's just it, it's 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 evolved into something else then you know it's probably not necessary for us to see it unless you know we see it as a bit of a journey because i suppose that it could be informative as to you know we've been here we tried this this didn't work or we, want, we wanted to go this way um but yeah it's it's it's, it's more the same really we, we, we're just really looking for those for those kind of new voices you know new kind of authentic diverse vo voices that, that the majority of the industry in general are looking for you know we, we want to support those those kind of projects that don't necessarily feel like they've they've had a voice before or they've had that chance before um you know and 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 as, as long as it's kind of along those that criteria and hitting those public service um you know points that that's what we want to do you know it, it's got to be informative for for, for the audience um you know, holding up a mirror to themselves or, 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 or for informing them more of the, the wider world, those those key kind of public service um, um, staples, really, you know, they're the kind of things that we really want to see, but that, but maybe from a, a different viewpoint or, you know, that, that innovation that, that may not have been there before, uh, you know, original content, that's, that's what we're all really kind of striving for, the, the best kind of stuff. Um, because in the end, oh, you know, because this is a non-recuperable fund, what, what we're looking to, to get out of it is is what the audience get out of it. That's 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 the the kind of full stop. We want to support the best content that we can uh, that the audience, you know, find the most compelling and, and, and useful. So, so you know, it's so, so, same thing that everyone's looking for, probably. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um... I have a question about sort of moving from development into production. Um, are you able to facilitate meetings be between teams that might be on your development slate and broadcasters if they're looking to, to, to move into, to apply for production? Does that happen? I, I, I kind of felt that was a Harriet question. I don't know. Sorry, I was just I'm trying to find my cursor. Oh. Um, yeah, it's no, but what we... Uh, we typically don't, but we can, you know, we can make introductions if helpful, though. I mean, one thing I will point out is, you know, as we are encouraging new voices, especially to the development fund, um, especially, you know, people coming from perhaps similar industries, but perhaps have not made content specifically for television for young audiences, you know, part of your development can be to hire perhaps a consultant you know, type role or, you know, an experienced producer to help support you in that. And then they will likely have those connections and be able to facilitate those meetings themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Sorry. I mean, yeah. Just, just to add, just because we, we, you know, we want to make, we want things to kind of happen as, as organically as possible. Really. And we don't really want to be kind of in the middle of that. And it, and it is, you know, purely the kind of uh, broadcasters, um, vision of, of what they want to appear on their channel and we, we, we're not we're not here to kind of you know um, uh, add a creative you know voice or, or to kind of uh, you know ask the broadcaster to, to kind of um, commission what we're we're doing or anything it's, it's very much up to them it's their choice so we, we just don't want to be a, you know a big influence on that really. Yeah mm. I mean it was interesting what you were saying there Harriet about the, the fund having a remit to support new voices as well and I imagine a lot of the people who are tuning into this this morning um, are sort of emerging content creators talent um, how much experience do you realistically have to have to apply to the fund I mean a lot of people might not have that TV background um, yeah 
I mean, it's all very case by case basis, as we say, but I mean, I guess it's sort of finding a balance of, you know, having the ability to deliver the project that, you know, you're, you, you want to, but also, yeah, perhaps being newer, whether it be new in that role or new in creating content for this audience. Um, so, like, I mean, like I said, if, if you are perhaps a bit, you know, of a newer voice, you can hire, you know, more experienced people to support you. Um, and you know we're here as well and we we can we encourage sort of like stage development as well so you know we perhaps might start with paper development and then later down the line say if it went to i don't know say if you're doing an animation test you could you then might be hiring more people so we take it sort of step by step but um yeah great thank you and one for you john um how do how do you work with awarded teams through production Um, well, uh, like I said, uh, we, we don't necessarily want to be, you know, a new, uh, another kind of creative voice in the process. You know, it's, it's very much down to uh, the producer uh, and with obviously editorial steer from the broadcaster. So, so we, we, we only really um, keep, uh, stay involved to kind of basically make sure that what we've all signed up for uh, is what we kind of get at the end of the, 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 um, the delivery. So, you know, I, I kind of look after the, the, the productions and, and just kind of check over the approvals um, from the criteria's point of view, really, just to make sure that that's kind of, you know, on track. So we do um, align with, uh, you know, the approvals of the broadcaster. So so any 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 uh, deliverables that they may have an approval through to the broadcaster, we, we ask for as well. Uh, and, and, you know, we have, we have an approval over that, but as I say, purely from a kind of criteria point of view. Um, so, so in that, you know, that that's where, um, like Gwen and and and, and Chandon and Jill are heavily involved with, you know, all the kind of deliverables that are coming through from all the, all the kind of projects that we're we're working with, and 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 you know, and help me out a lot with that, just so I can, um, you know, just briefly look over them and make sure that we're happy with, you know, what, where it's kind of headed and, and where it's going. But, but aside from that, as I say, it's a very, it's a, it's a very kind of small voice there from, from, from our point of view. It's, it's you know, we, we want the, the, uh, the producer and the broadcasters um, to kind of, you know, crack on and, and, and deliver the show that they really, you know, uh, want. So, so as I say, pure, purely just from a, a create, uh, from a, a criteria point of view, you know that that's that's all we do really. we just kind of cast cast an eye over it really great thanks john um so i'm going to move on to you jill um you spend a lot of time looking at budget schedules finance plans that are coming in uh into the fund through the applications and uh, etc what do you need to see in these documents and are there common mistakes that people routinely seem to make with them yes there are yeah. Um, <laughs> so with the production fund and the development fund, there's slightly different asks um, of what we would like to see and what we expect to see. I'll start with um, development. Uh, so in the, if you go through the guidelines, you can see in there it talks about lines in the budget must be reasonable. So we, we wouldn't fund, for example, first class travel and things like that. Um, and that's purely because because it's public funds we have to make the funds stretch as far as they can and you know support projects as as far and wide as we can so obviously we expect lines to be reasonable to achieve that and um, so that that's a big ask you know or a core ask rather lines must be reasonable in the budget the other thing that we we often don't see that we need to see and this does relate to both development and production budgets is the detail within a budget so things like rate unit type and role in order for us to um ensure as per the guidelines that minimums industry minimums that are set out in the guidelines like back to pact equity uh, writers guild are being met we do need to understand what the role is that's being engaged how long for and what rate they've been being uh, paid at because otherwise we haven't got a good idea of how that total works out and um, the other thing with development, 
and we are in the process of tweaking the guidelines a little bit to kind of reflect this but well actually to be fair this already it's already stated in the development guidelines and the production guidelines but we we'll probably make it a bit clearer is that we want to see a budget document that outlines all the things that are stated in the guidelines like I say rate broken down that lines are reasonable and whatnot a schedule document which I realize is a bit you might often say well it's a development project it'll take as long as it takes but we just want to have an idea of how long the work that you're doing in development is anticipated to take because then that gives us a good idea of the money that you're asking for you know how does that work out in terms of time and then the most important one for me because again it gives you a good measure of what's being asked for money wise is a list of outcomes because there is a section in the application where you can list this but sometimes depending on how you're how you choose to relay that information it can get a little bit blurred so for me the three documents i like to see for development projects are the budget the schedule document even if that is just you know we expect this to take 10 weeks over four months or whatever and then an outcomes document which just lists we we want out of this we want a 30 minute script a bible this that and the other just so we can understand what is being what is hoping to achieve by the end of it and then switching to production a lot of the guidelines are very similar we expect minimum rates as set out in the guidelines to be achieved um, and you know lines must be reasonable we won't fund first class travel all that kind of stuff but then there are additional things in production the production budgets that we expect to see so um you know the insurance costs we it has to be E and O, and we have to have the, the BFI named as, an, as a funding party on the insurance. There has to be a 0.5% skills fund contribution uh, included in the budget. Um, adequate financing costs, so if you're accessing the tax credit for your production, then you need to allow for the cost of borrowing money, if you're borrowing money, or express to us how it is that that's going to be cash flowed. Um, Albert, so that's the carbon uh, calculation. Um, there isn't actually any cost to achieve Albert certification, but you do have to plan for the time required to input that data to achieve that certification. Contingency, we do expect to see contingency on a budget. Um, whether or not that gets used is another matter, but you know we feel that it's essential for any production that they should have a contingency in place. And again, like I said, the budget needs to break down the rate type, uh, the unit, the role, and the minimum rates of pay need to be met. And so the three documents I would want to see from a production application would be a budget document, a production schedule, which is quite a standard um, typical one, and a finance plan. So a finance plan will break down what your funding streams are and how that's made up. Uh, in order for us to understand where the funding streams are coming from and where we fit into that. So I think for me, the, the main bits that get missed often are the rates um, and how the total has been met and sometimes the guidelines, the things that we ask for that are broken down, it's now in like a checklist form, aren't always met. So from that perspective, if there's those sort of things missing, it can delay your application because Aisha at the sort of front door will check for those things. And it might be that we have to push the application back to you to then say, you've missed a couple of things, can you revise this? And then it'll come to me. So that was a very like quick whistle stop kind of what I look for, but it's, it's all in the guidelines and essentially the more detail, the better. Right, so it's really worth taking the time to make sure that people get that right, go through that checklist, yeah. really provide everything you need, just because it saves time for everybody then, doesn't it? It does, and, it, and it's about um, trying to, it's about making it as easy as possible for us to understand and assess what is being asked for in terms of monetary ask versus outcomes and ambition and scope. And then we can make a proper assessment on, on if what's being asked for is of the right value. Yeah. 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 Brill. Thanks, Jill. That was super clear. No Nisha, moving on to you. Um, we've got questions coming in. This is great. Um, so I'll, I'll 
try and get onto those in a minute as well. Thanks everybody. If you do have any questions for the team, pop, pop them in the Q&A box and we'll get to them. Um, so Heesham, you handle all the legal business affairs side of the fund. Um, what do applicants need to be mindful of when they're applying? Uh, just to make sure that they've got all their legal sort of rights issues squared away as early as possible. Yes. Um, well, most points that come up tend to be unique to that specific project, but there are a couple of areas I can perhaps flag that we encounter frequently, which um, which, which will be you know helpful to be borne in mind. So, in, in terms of development awards, applicants need to be able to demonstrate that they they either own the rights in the project, control the rights, or are able to obtain the rights. So they're kind of three main situations. Uh, quite, it sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised that this often prompts questions from us. Um, to expand on each of those, A, most straightforward, the applicant owns the intellectual property themselves, so there's no other third party interests. Second one, B, they may uh, they control the rights that means they may have obtained an option over a book they like or um the the intellectual property belongs to someone else but the applicant has by mean by by some agreement or other they can control what happens to it or c there are they don't own the rights they don't control the rights but they they are able to get their hands on them so so in that instance they may have been again they may, there may be a, a, a piece of writing or a, a book that they like they may have been in contact with the rights holder and have got an indication that the rights are available and um, obtainable so in those circumstances the, the cost that the applicant would have to pay of, of actually getting their hands on the rights could be built into their application to us so if they haven't already got it squared away they can they can find out what it would cost find out whether they're available and then build that into what they're asking us for so it seems it seems pretty stating the obvious that the, the you know the rights should be um in hand but it's not always the case i think that's the main thing on development projects um on production awards by the time the project's ready to go into production rights really should be taken care of the applicant should have control of, of, of the rights of the intellectual property in the thing that they're going to make but what we, we need to see evidence of that and we call that chain of title so we want uh, an applicant to provide us with documents be it an option uh, a format agreement uh, a talent agreement if it's contingent on a particular yeah, person or, 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 or a cast member or, or whatever so that shouldn't be a problem because that's what a broad, any broadcaster would be looking for that any financier would be looking for that so we just it wouldn't be putting the applicant to any greater work it should all be there um so the only other thing we'd look for is as was touched on earlier evidence of um evidence in support of each line of the finance plan so a commitment from a broadcaster with a figure on an accurate tax credit estimate, evidence of any pre-sales or distribution deals that have been done, just something something backing each each line in the finance plan. Um, they're really the main sort of general points for, for both. But um, drop any questions in that um, if you have anything specific, and we'll, um, we'll help where we can. Yes. Yeah. If anybody has any questions on any of this, please do pop it in the in the Q and A box, and we'll. We'll get to them. Thank you very much. That was really useful. Um, Aisha and Chandon, moving on to you. You're um, you're sort of on the front line with applications coming in, aren't you? Do you see common mistakes cropping up in applications? Do, do, is there any, any advice that you would give to people looking to apply to make sure that, um, that that from the off their application is in good shape? Yeah. So it's um a lot of it's just to re reiterate what everyone else is saying so um like um harriet and john have said um just to make sure that those eligibility criteria are met so we sometimes see people um applicants applying who um aren't the um producer and executive producer of a limited company so those who apply need to be part of a registered limited company 
Um, and again, with, um, with production, it just needs to have that broadcaster commitment. It needs to be minimum of 50% um, funding already in place. Um, and then I usually look out for, just to make sure all of those um, uh, appropriate um, attachments are with the uh, application. Otherwise, I'll go back to them and sort of like request them. So yeah, stuff like the letter of intent, letter of financial um, commitment as well, uh, particularly for production awards. Um, and then for both production and development, again, just as Jill was saying, need, needing to see the, the detailed budget document, um, schedule, um, and then outcomes for development. Um, so we see that quite a bit. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's just, there's a handy checklist on our guidelines. So you can look at that. They're, they're both on page six of both the guidelines. I remember that. Um, so you can literally just go through that and just tick box it. <laughs> Um, I would add that I answer the main phone line and I get lots of different queries um, but a lot of them are quite specific to the project which we obviously can't see yet so I would encourage people to apply because we don't take pitch meetings and just fill in everything um, you know as completely as possible um, and your application kind of starts the conversation with us we're a very friendly fund we're really happy to work with you um, on your application as long as you meet enough of the criteria um, and all that information is in the guidelines. So do read the guidelines. I cannot stress that enough. All read the answers the are guidelines. there. It's like it's helping you so much. It's giving you free money. Read the guidelines. Um, <laughs> the other thing I would say is diversity standards. That's a really um, important part of your application. Um, we really want your, di um, your diversity to be intrinsic to your project. It, it, this is not a tick box exercise. Um, it's part of the criteria. We're really looking for authentic representation. If you Google BFI diversity standards, you can see a lot of information about that. And it's actually our certification team um, in BFI in London who looks at those for you. So if there's any problems and they have any questions, they will come back to you. But obviously that does slow down your application a little bit. So as much information as you can give us, then um, you know, the more chance you have to get it through quickly. Brilliant. That's yeah. Read the guidelines, guys. We say yeah. It's the same with our funds as well. Read the guidelines. It should all be in there. We're constantly sort of adapting them and updating them, aren't we? As as we get queries in and things and making things clearer and clearer. So yeah, Cara's dropped all the links in. Read the guidelines. Uh, Gwyn, um, question for you: If people are wanting to get in touch with the fund, how how can they how can they engage? How can they how can I come to you? If they've read the guidelines, you're on mute, Gwyn. <laughs> there you are. All, all the stuff we've been talking about can be seen uh, by Googling BFI YAC or www.bfi.org.uk. In there, you'll find detailed guidelines, um, development and production application forms, and absolutely everything that the guys have been talking about so far. Um, furthermore, if you've got any more queries, you can email us on yakf at bfi.org.uk and the telephone number is plus four four oh two oh seven one seven three three two four six. And uh, I feel like we should put that like at the bottom of your screen, Gwyn, like <laughs> one of those kids shows on Saturday mornings. It's brilliant. Thank you very much. And yeah they are, the team is really really friendly and um as you can see look at them all so do yeah do uh, get in touch with them now you're going to get inundated guys look you've got all your details in the chat there the uh, email contact phone number you can ring gwyn um brill all right so we've got we've got quite a few questions that have come in now from uh from the participants so uh i'm going to have a look in the q a box and um so the first one I've got here is asking if you would be open to a short film idea being converted to a TV programme, would submitting the script be useful evidence or might it sway you into thinking it should remain as a film? I don't know who wants to take that, it's probably one for you Harriet. Yeah, I mean we're definitely open to it. I think it, it would be, I think it would be helpful to see the script, see what it is exactly you're adapting and perhaps how suitable 
it would be, um, whether it be more suited as like a, a one-off TV drama or perhaps a series or, you know, whatever it is you think um, suitable. Um, but yeah, different, I mean, we're open to anything. I mean, even a short film, if it had a place on broadcast television, could be, you know, um, you know, uh, eligible as well. So really any format, any, any genre, any length, um, as long as it was intended for one of those public service broadcasters is, is great. Real. Thank you. Um, I've got a question here about edgy offensive content. Are there ethical guidelines to what you will or will not fund? Will you ask producers and directors to modify their content to meet your guidelines? Um, I can go again. Um, I think as long as it was targeting the audience that we're trying to cater for, which is naught to 18. So I'm guessing you're aiming for the higher end of that. So, you know, um, it can be post watershed content. Um, kids do stay up late sometimes, but yeah, I think as long as it was specifically relevant to, you know, 16 to 18 year olds, there are, we, we do get some shows that are sort of on the line and, you know, especially with kids, they often like to watch content perhaps a bit older than them, you know, that sort of aspirational element. But, um, you know, stuff like Skins was pretty edgy back in the day and, and that was still, you know, really talking to, our, you know, our audience as well. So, um, yeah, it's not to say it all has to be pre 9pm, you know, super safe, but yeah, as long as it's going for that audience, it's fine. And, you know, it is in, it would obviously have to meet, you know, Ofcom regulations and be in line with the broadcaster's tone of voice, but yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So you can have more challenging content. Definitely. Um, another question here is asking about, well, it says your guidelines say that you want to support small indies. Are you open to applications from really new indies or don't, who don't have any commissions under their belt yet? Or would it be better to submit the application from an individual producer? Some, somebody else or I can, John, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we are, we are obviously open to, you know, um, applications from small indies or, 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 or you know, new indies, because uh, as Harry said, you know, we, we want to support as many new voices as, as possible. Um, but we would require the, the, the applicant, the, the producer or exec producer to, to, to be able to demonstrate that they, they've got, they've got some um, uh, credits already, or they, they, they've been able to, you know, deliver a, a, a program of, of similar kind of status really. So, so if, if you're, if you're a brand new indie, but you know, maybe you're a, a producer that, that is, has kind of done stuff elsewhere that, that, that would qualify, you know, if, it, if it's a limited company, but you know, the actual applicant producer, has some credits that, that that would definitely qualify. So, so, um, so yeah, you know, we, we completely encourage that kind of stuff. Yeah. Thanks, John. Um, question from Joseph Wallace. Hi, Joseph. Um, he's asking about an animation series. Would it be realistic for a first-time television creator to apply straight to making a pilot, or would it be advisable to apply for development to work out outlines, a couple of full scripts, designs, and a bible? before thinking about a pilot, which can be really costly in animation? Um, totally case by case, I'd say. Um, though typically we would encourage a staged approach. And, and, you know, I mean, it's not to say we wouldn't just go ahead and, and fund, you know, say a pilot or an animation test straight away, but it might be, depending on the idea and, um, you know, whether it would be worth doing some of that initial paper development, sharing it with broadcasters and then getting their feedback. Because, you know, it might be, they have a project kind of similar already in development, or it might be that they just have some really useful and helpful feedback that you could then incorporate into that pilot or that animation test, um, you know, before you've gone and done it. Um, so, but you know, if you want to apply for what you think you need, if we think your project completely meets the criteria, but perhaps you can perhaps maybe do a bit more, maybe a bit more on this bit, maybe a bit less of that bit in terms of your development activity, we would just, get back to you and go how about we start with this um, and then you can always apply for additional funding which we process super quickly um, so so if you then did take it to a broadcaster they went great but would love to see xyz we can then you know look at funding xyz just to add to that as well we often find that working in that manner does actually prove beneficial 
to the awardee and the applicant as well because they find that it's like a true development process where they're taking it a bit at a time really focusing on how the content needs to play out and it really shapes the kind of end uh, content sort of it, it just feels more beneficial is what we found and we have had that feedback um, from broadcasters and applicants alike so it, it is worthwhile doing it in that kind of staged uh, manner we think. Well great advice thank you very much hope that answers your question Joseph. Um, question from Brendan O'Neill in Birmingham hi Brendan um, I feel like a, I feel like I'm on radio two or something doing the Q&A box I feel like I could give like Ken Bruce a run for his money um, so Brendan's asking I think we've sort of slightly answered this um, would you introduce people to others such as broadcasters to help them find the other 50% needed to match the production fund is that something you can do John um, I mean, I, I, would, I would probably just counter that with you probably need to look at it the other way around in as much as, you know, coming to, coming to our fund, you, you should essentially have a commission in place and, and, and that other 50% of the funds in place. So, so it, it wouldn't really make sense to kind of come to us first and then us to start making an introduction to, to, to broadcasters and other financiers. It, 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 it kind of needs to be the other way around, really um so so you know in order to to, to qualify for, for for the production fund as i say you, you would need that that commitment from from a broadcaster and then you know the other you know 50 percent as, as we've described could be made up from obviously the license fee you know the tax credit um uh you know uh, uh pre-sales distribution deals you know however you know, you want to kind of slice it really. Sorry, I've just been really put off by, I've, I've become really massive in my, in my screen for some reason, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so, so I, I would kind of, I would go through that, those kind of processes before they kind of came to us. Yeah, I'd just chip in there, John, you've kind of said it, but I, traditionally, I think we'd be the last in, we'd be the last money in, so um, it would be the way John explains it. Yeah, 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 that's helpful, thank you. Uh, and one last question here. Um, we've still got six minutes, guys. So if anybody else has a question, you can pop it in and we'll try and get to it. Um, saying hello, everyone. Would you say that certain project types are sought after more than others, i.e. Uh, the fund looking for typical TV content like a short form program series more than a one off short film that could be broadcast? Um we're very much led by the broadcaster. I mean, obviously, if you're going to the production fund, you've already got that commission. Um, so, you know, I guess with development, it, it's totally anything that the broadcaster wants. I guess typically, you know, series are, or are more typical for television. And I guess if someone came with sort of perhaps a really bizarre format, say a four hour long interactive dance piece, I don't know, but, you know, then we might be, you know, sort of encouraging a conversation earlier in the day. Um, but, you know, whatever, we're totally led by the broadcaster, I'd say. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever they'd like. Yeah, and just, just expanding on that, and, and it's similar to an uh, earlier point you made, you know, we, we have had applications for short films and fil feature length films, you know. Yeah. So it can be anything as long as, you know, the broadcaster's up for it, really. You know, we, we just we just want to support the, the best stuff we can uh, just kind of reiterating that again but as long as it's for one of these qualifying um, platforms you know then yeah it could be anything you know and, and I, I, I really I wasn't sure if we would see anything outside of series uh, but but we have uh, so you know look forward to seeing more of those kind of things and I suppose you know from from uh, from the point of view of, of why this fund exists, we, you know, we, we, what we are hoping to see more kind of uh, older teen live action content, just because they've been so underserved for so long. So, you know, anything, anything around that area, we're, we're really kind of, you know, hoping to support a lot more of that if possible. Yeah, anything targeted towards audiences, the audiences that have been particularly underserved would be, yeah, a plus from us. Great. 
thank you. Um, had some more questions drop in. Um, is something developed from established IP more likely to be funded? No, not really, no. I mean, I guess we, we have our additionality criteria, which is, you know, what is new and what makes this more risky and, you know, less likely to receive funding elsewhere. And I guess if something comes from a really well-known established IP, it's seen as sort of a, a safer bet. And, you know, if it has an established audience already, again, it seems as quite safer. So I def definitely not, I'd say. Thanks. Um... Do you support co-pros that have, for example, 50% from a foreign commissioner? Is that possible? Um, it is, um, you know, we, we, can, we can look at, um, you know, co-productions uh, and, and, and the like. Uh, I would say though, if, if, if they were going into international co-productions, then as Harriet touched on, we'd have to talk about additionality. That's one of the criteria. You know, if, if this if this is able to be potentially funded in, in many different streams, then we'd have to kind of uh, answer why you know it would pass our uh, additionality criteria. Um, also, if if there is international co-productions, we would we would have to kind of insist that the the international elements do not have that creative voice. That the, the, the qualifying UK broadcaster has because at the end of the day we want to be uh, uh, supporting content that is relevant to, to UK audiences and reflecting you know the UK culture essentially so so we need to kind of make sure that that isn't uh, going to be um, a put in jeopardy um, and then also thinking about the spend you know so we would we would have to kind of think about what our percentage of the um, uh, of the uh, fund, uh, the, the uh, budget would be spent on in UK spend. So if it was international spend, we, we wouldn't, you know, necessarily get involved in that. Great, thank you. Um, we've got an interesting question here that asking, what do you think are the underserved audiences at the moment for young audiences? Um, I, mean, I mentioned earlier, you know, it's, it's you know, it's kind of widely um, um, expressed that you know, team, you know, team audiences just haven't had as much content, you know, um, from the UK uh, as, as potentially others. So, you know, preschool definitely, um, you know, there's, there's, there's plenty out there already, but maybe not so much from from a UK uh, cultural. Uh, point of view so that's why we, we're definitely going to do you know some we have done some preschool and, and will continue to but it, but there, there is a, an argument that there's, there's, there's already you know plenty of that for for um, for audiences out there so the kind of older you go the, the, the less and less we feel that you know is, is really there's, there's enough of that content out there and especially from a UK point of view um, so so yeah the, those older kind of teens and, and kind of live action is, is, is a big kind of priority for us. I guess there's also, you know, indigenous language content, because um, we can do content, you know, in Welsh or Gaelic. Um, so, you know, they, they've been particularly underserved. Um, also, it's sort of, it was, it was half of, Brit I think it was around half of British audiences didn't see themselves reflected on screen. Um, so, you know, content that's more reflective of, you know, children who typically don't see themselves on screen, but, you know, we'd consider them perhaps slightly underserved as well. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, we've got a question about how much emphasis you place on the innovation side of the projects. Um, if you have a straight narrative scripted idea, is it better to create an interactive Snapchat TikTok execution to go with it? Um, John? Uh, well, uh, um... I don't know. Well, we place as much emphasis on on innovation as we do with any of the other criteria. Really, as I said earlier, we we want to see, you know, uh, really, you know, new uh, original uh, content that has innovation at its eyes. You know, look, looks at something in a different way, and that can be on screen or, or off screen. You know, it could be your, you know your pipeline, which is completely different, or you know, just just a really new way of doing something. Um, but yeah, I, th I think you know. We, we, we want to see those those kind of really fresh, different ways of, of, of uh, 
looking at things and, and presenting things. I mean, with, with the kind of uh, interactive and Snapchat, TikTok kind of notes, I suppose, you know, just on that, we don't mind um, extra content being made to support the, um, the core content, but essentially those are non-qualifying platforms. So, you know, we, we want to concentrate on driving the audience to where the content is, which is on these, these broadcaster platforms. So, so we, we, you know, we're not necessarily preoccupied with that. That would be part of the marketing stream, really. Um, but, but it's, yeah, it's how it's presented on the screen, uh, sorry, on the, on the, on the qualifying platform that we're really interested in. Brilliant. Thank you. I'm going to go for one last question. Um, how long is the fund due to run for? Is there a cutoff point for the slate in terms of the subsidy? Jackie. Hello. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's um, a three year pilot. Um, and, you know, we hope that we are making a compelling argument to government for it to go beyond that. Um, so we are a rolling fund as well, so we have no current cut-off date to get applications in by. But as I always say, book early to avoid disappointment. Thanks, Jackie. That's really good to know. Um, well, whilst we've still got you, one last one, should be a quick one. What's your usual response rate to applications for the development fund? As in, I'm, I'm just time or, I mean, we respond to everyone. Um, we, we aim to get back to you within, I think it's 12 weeks. Um, we have been particularly busy with the pandemic because a lot of people have been doing development instead of production. Um, but yeah, we aim to get back to you within um, 12 weeks. So I'm not sure of the rate of how many approved versus declined, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, we get back to everyone. Yeah, I think it was just the sort of time window in the turnaround. Okay, yeah. That's super. Thank you very much, everybody. That was really, we're, we're out of time now. We have one more webinar tomorrow with um, Harriet and John chatting to two awarded uh, filmmakers. Cara's popping the registration link in there now. If you want to hear more about the fund from the perspective of people who've actually applied, been successful and are working with the team now, you can tune in tomorrow, 11 a.m., same time, same place, different link. You have to register for a different link. Um, and yes, you can hear more from um, content creators who have been through the process. So I just want to say thank you ever so much to the Young Audiences Content Fund. All of you, you're all brilliant and you're doing amazing work. Thank you very much for giving up Thanks. an hour for us today. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us, Jess. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye now.